In this video, we are going to prove the rank nullity theorem. It says this V and W are finite dimensional vector spaces and L is a linear transformation from L to W, then the dimension of the nullity of L plus the rank of L is equal to the dimension of V. So let us prove this. How about we let N, which is equal to V1 up to Vm, be your basis for the nullity of L, the linear transformation. Now, Let's see where I can put this, if anywhere. Let us just see what's going on. So you have this vector space V, you have this vector space W, and you have the linear transformation that moves vectors from V and your yeah, vectors from V into vectors in W. Now, inside V you have the null of L. And the null of L, you know, among other vectors, it, it has V1 and V2, all the way up to Vn, and other vectors, linear combinations. Well, all of those are going, since they're in the null space, they're gonna go to zero. Now, you also has other vectors in V. Let's say, well, we'll come back to that. They all go the null, the vectors V1 through Vn, everything in the null space, it gets mapped to zero. Now, what we want to do is, how about we extend N to a basis for V. We extend, you know, let's write it out this way, extend N to a basis for V. And let that be V1, V2, up to Vm, and then Vm plus 1, Vm plus 2, all the way up to V sub N. Let me not write just one V differently, up to V sub N. So this here is a basis for V. Can always extend a set if they're linearly independent set, V1 through Vn, the linearly independent set, I mean, it is a basis for a subset of V. So this is a linearly independent set. Let's mark that in yellow. And then I add some more vectors to make it a basis for V. So that set is our basis for V. Okay. So now, here's where the proof starts coming together. I make the following claim, that the set T of V1, or all the way up to T of Vn, is a basis for the image of L. Well, what exactly is their image of L? Well, let's see, let's use a different color. So you, you have other vectors, Vm plus one, Vm plus two, all the way up to Vn. Up here, it should say Vm. 
it should say up to V sub M. And up to V sub N are other vectors. Now, these vectors go elsewhere. Maybe this one goes here, and this one goes here, and that one goes there. All of these vectors, they're in the image of L. They are in the image of L. Some vectors may not be on to W. Some vectors from V may not go to these vectors in W. So the image of L doesn't have to be all of L. All of W, excuse me. Okay. Now, I claim that this claim will be enough. Now, you don't need to write this in the proof, but we have this. We have that the dimension of V will equal to M plus N minus M, which is just what we want. N minus M, because M, uh, let's see where it is. This set is the basis for the null. So this is the dimension of the null of L plus, now M minus N is just going to be the dimension of the image of L. And that's exactly what we want to show because that equals to the dimension of V. The dimension of V, or basis for V, it has n elements. It has n vectors. So that's what we want, and that's what we would get if the claim is true. So this is the argument why the claim is sufficient to show to complete the proof. What's in blue, you don't have to write down in a proof. Okay, so to show that any set, to show that this set is a basis for the image of L, all I have to show is that it's a linearly independent set and it spans the image of L. Okay, so we take a linear combination. Suppose uh, just want to think for a moment. Okay, so I found an error in my proof or in my claim. I want this vector here to be something else. I want it to be T of V M plus one. So suppose that C M plus, well, let's continue with the same color. Suppose, so I'm going to take a linear combination of these vectors. Suppose our C M plus one, T of V M plus one, plus C M plus two, T of V M plus two, all the way down to C sub N, T of V sub N is equal to zero. Now, if I can conclude that all those coefficients are zero, then I showed linearly independent. Let me write that here. We're gonna show linearly independence. Okay, now, and of course this is going to be the zero vector in W because we're taking T of vectors in V and we're going to end in W and we scale that. Now, this here is the same as this here, this equation 
is the same as T of CM plus 1, VM plus 1, plus CM plus 2, uh, VM plus 2, all the way down to CN uh, V sub N. And this is equal to 0 and W. Now, what this tells me is that this vector here, notice T of this vector is the zero vector. So this vector must be in the, the null space. CM plus 1, VM plus 1, plus CM plus 2, V sub M plus 2, all the way down to C and V N, it must be in the null space of L. But the null space of L is the span of V1 up to Vm. Remember, let this set be a basis for the null space. Okay, so this here is some single vector. When you add them, you get a single vector in the span of that set. So then CM plus 1, VM plus 1, all the way down to CN, VN, it must equal, well, it's in the span of that. So there must be other Kant coefficients, other scalars, like D1 through Dn. So this one vector is equal to D1, V1, plus D2, V2, all the way up to dm, vm. Okay, now I'm going to bring all of this to the other side. So I get negative d1, v1, minus d2, v2, minus, minus, dm, vm, let's change the color, let's plus these vectors, CM plus 1, VM plus 1, all the way down to C, N, V, N. And this equals the zero vector, N, V. Okay. But now, something very interesting is here. We have a linear combination of these n vectors. What do we know about these n vectors? We extended the basis for the null set to a basis for v. This set is our basis for v. v1, v2, all the way up to vn. Oh, v1, v2, all the way up to vn. Since the set V1 up to Vm, up to v, Vm plus 1, all the way up to Vn, is a basis for V, that implies that all these coefficients are 0. All these coefficients are 0. Negative D1 is there, well, let me not say it that way. Negative D1 is equal to negative D2, which is equal to negative DM, which is equal to C, this coefficient, CM plus 1, which is equal to CM plus 2, all the way down to C sub N which equals zero. But that's just what we want. That's just what we want. I wanted to show that these coefficients are zero. Well, they are. They're all zero. So, uh,
but I just wanted to see the name of the set. This set is linearly independent. So, T of our Vm plus 1, all the way down to T of V sub n is a linearly independent set. So, this is one big chunk. Now we have to show that that set spans, that this set spans their image of L. Okay. So, what we're going to do then is, so this is for span. Let W be in uh, the image of L. So there exists a V in V such that T of V is equal to W. T of V is equal to W. But we have a vector space for V. V is equal to our, a linear combination of that vec of those vectors in the basis. It's C1V1 all the way down to CM plus, sorry, CMVM, CMVM plus CM plus 1, VM plus 1, all the way down to CNVN. That's what V equals. So T of V, T of V, T of V, which is also W, is equal to T of this mess. That's just V, another way of writing V. So it's T of C1, V1, all the way down to CM, VM, plus CM plus 1, VM plus 1, all the way down to C sub n, V sub n. Okay, but this is equal to, and this is beautiful, this is equal to C1 T of V1, T of that, plus T of all the vectors in here. Eventually, T of that vector, C, M, V, M. In fact, we can factor out the constant, so linear transformation, C M T of V M plus C M plus one T of V M plus one all the way down to T of that, which is the same as C N times T of V N. But really nice things happen. V one up to V N there V M they're in the null of L that is this is zero. This is zero. All of these are zero. And of course, C1 times zero is zero. This is all zero. The, this, so W is just this. What well, can be expressed like that? Cm plus one, T of Vm plus one, plus all the way down to C sub n, T, a V sub n. But now remember, with our claim, I wanted to show that this, these vectors span the image of L. But those are the vectors. Those are the vectors. W is a linear combination of those vectors. So W is contained in the span of Vm plus one, Vm plus two, etc., all the way up to V sub n. But that's all I wanted to show. This is the span part. And a 
above we show linearly, linearly linear independence. Can talk after this proof. Combining, we have that v m plus one all the way up to v sub n is contained in the span of the image of L. And that's exactly what we wanted to show. Well, something's a little bit wrong. Uh, th th that's what I showed in the last step. This set, sorry about that, this set is a basis is a basis for the image of the linear transformation that completes this theorem hey it wasn't that bad go over any parts you didn't understand if I'm able to write up this proof you should at least be able to understand it or if you like videos like this where all we do are mathematical proofs, then please subscribe to my channel. Most of all, watch the next video and the one after that and continue the watch and learn. See you in the next video.